Um, I'm Leo Eriv. I'm a PhD student at the Weizmann Institute of Science, uh, and I will be presenting to you uh, a work that will be presented in the upcoming ICML. Um, differently from the previous talk that we saw here today, I'm going to focus only on uh, the specific paper and pre present it to you. And uh, the name of the paper is Multidiffusion, and the idea is how can we fuse uh, diffusion paths in order to have a controlled and flexible image generation. And it is a joint work with Omar Bertal and my supervisor, Jaron Lipman and Tali Deke. Okay, I'm gonna move to the mouse. No, sorry. Okay, uh, so as we saw from the last two talks, uh, we know that diffusion model really emerged as a high quality text to image generation model. And you can see from some of the examples here uh, that I manually picked and generated using the Bing Im Im image generator. And as we saw um, in the previous two talks that we had, uh, there's a bit the limitation of this uh, trained diffusion model where you are limited with the user controllability, controllability that you have in hand. You are only can control these in the text. And if you want to control the structure, the form, or the arrangement of the object, um, it can be only described using the text. And another thing is that usually those models are trained to generate a fixed resolution squared images. Is, um, that their a model was trained on. So the question that will guide us using my, during my talk is how can we control the generation using a more flexible way? Say, for example, I want to generate uh, an image in an arbitrary aspect ratio, for example, this panorama, or say that I want to control where the buildings are gonna be located or the sun when in the generated image. So, uh, that is why we proposed uh, a method called multidiffusion. That is, this is uh, the result of our method and it enables such uh, general uh, and flexible control. So if we're examining all the, all the methods that previously done and presented also in the uh, previous talks, we can characterize this into two approach. One of them is the like kind of like explicitly control where can you can condition on another uh, guidance signal, for example, depth, if you want to do depth to image generation or given a semantic segmentation layout uh, to generate an image according to that. However, those models and methods are using a large scale training or fine tuning. And even in a fine tuning case, uh, they required some uh, large data set training over that. And they are also task specific for this like depth conditioning or uh, semantic uh, segmentation conditioning. The other type of approaches uh, that we saw uh, as well here are in the other talks are um, like implicitly controlled the generation by manipulating a pretend model. That is by uh, utilizing the prior of the model or maybe uh, utilize some extra uh, like intermediate features or uh, the cross attention features in order to control this uh, generation. So although they're not requiring any training, um, they are really type specific and they are usually kind of tailored made manipulation uh, for the tasks that you are require like editing or structure control or doing in painting. So our approach as required no training is also lying in this approach of manipulating the generation of a pretend model, but it's a general approach and it's more flexible. And here we can see that it allow us to have like a different aspect ratio and as well uh, controlled using a semantic layout. And it's not have to be some like specific tight mask. It can only be also be like rough mask as bounding boxes. So I know this is like the third time you're hearing this, but a really short uh, recap on diffusion model. I promise I will do that fast. Um, so um, it's a generative model that it's like time dependent as we saw already here before. And the idea is to define a, pro a forward process that is really easy to compute. It's just like by corrupting the image and just like add gradual noise uh, uh, during time and until you reach a Gaussian noise distribution that is easy to sample from. And the idea with the fusion model is that you want to learn 
to approximate uh, the reverse process. So the diffusion models that we will learn will call will terminate here as phi, and it will try to denoise the image and each timestamp. And once you have a generate uh, a trained diffusion model, you can simply uh, generate an image. Again, we have the Kitty uh, from Gau <laughs> Keynote, um, and you start from uh, Gaussian uh, noise. Uh, and then sequentially, you can condition on the text. Uh, the text embedding is denoted here as Y. And um, each time you're denoising the image until you get uh, X naught, which will be the generated uh, image from the distribution that we learned using the model. So now we want to describe, I want to describe to you the multi-diffusion process. And the idea is basically very similar to what we saw before about like how can we sample a panorama instead of an image. So again, we're starting with uh, a noisy Gaussian panoramic image, and we have some text conditioning, uh, like we see, we see here, a photo of a snowscaped mountain. And we want to define uh, a multi-diffusion process, which will denote her as psi, and it's gradually denoised the noisy panorama until we reach to this uh, seamless and high quality panorama that is also matches um, the text prompt that we have. However, we don't have this kind of like large scale text to panorama generation. We want to do that only using um, the pre-trained model that we have, which is fee that is working on uh, swearing images that is with fixed resolution. So how can we define this process? So the first naive approach will be, okay, let's just uh, crop, uh, take uh, individual crops, and then apply the pre-trained diffusion models in, or in each one of the crops. However, however, we can see that based on that, we're not getting like seamless and consistent panoramic as we want because each one of those crops eventually leads to a different diffusion process and it will not be the required panorama as we want. So the idea now is, okay, let's not take non-overlapping crops. What happens if you're looking on overlapping crops? So even with overlapping crops, we see that if we take the diffusion process until its end and denoise each one of them, it will result in, um, in images where the overlap, overlapping pixel doesn't match. And this is because each one of them, each one of the images takes a different trajectory in the diffusion process, and it's not really um, reply to the constraints that overlapping pixels should have the same value. Okay, so the idea that we suggest in the paper is to somehow fuse this path, like take the sequential, sequentially path that each one, each step in the diffusion model that is suggested, and then we can have this, um, this another path that is fusing between all the course overlapping crops. So instead of having like this uh, inconsistent result, we can have a, a fused uh, generation that is really um, consistent with the overlaps. So let's describe a bit in more details of, of how it works and how we define such, such process. Um, so we're starting from uh, a panorama here. It's like, it's not really a panorama, but it's another image with uh, arbitrary aspect ratio. And we just like, uh, and we'll denote it as J uh, underscore T. And the idea I want to define to you the process at each time step T. So taking uh, N, over, uh, N crops, Fi is gonna take the Ith crops that we can describe. Um, and then we can apply one step of the diffusion, uh, pre-trained diffusion model fee that we had. And as you can see, each crop is not really reliable uh, with another and it can take us to different direction. So the idea we want to define uh, the noising step, Psi, that will be as close as possible to the pre-trained model. It's gonna be global step for all the crops. So to be more specifically, we want that if we're taking the same exact uh, crops from the denoised image, it will be match uh, to the one step that we did with the pre-trained diffusion model. And 
to mathematically formulate this, this is very easy. We just want to minimize the mean square error between um, the denoised next step to uh, the, I'm sorry, to the next step by the diffusion model and uh, the new, the next panorama step that we want to uh, evaluate. And this is a very simple um, a cost function that can be analytically computed. And just like for each pixel, we can just take the, the average of the direction uh, according to each, uh, to each crop. Okay, so moving on to the other application that I showed to you, we are talking about region-based control. And here we don't have one text conditioning. We're gonna have multiple text conditioning and their corresponding region masks. Those The mask will be noted as MI and each one have a different embedding uh, WI. And again, if we're starting from some uh, noisy image and just take independently uh, the diffusion process uh, according to fit to each one of the of the text embedding, we're gonna result in really not consistent and not reliable uh, results. And again, as in the panorama case, the idea is to define a global process that will be as close as possible, um, but under the constraint that it should that the region uh, uh, should match the the text prompt. So again, uh, we can describe that very easily using the next cost function. So the idea is that it, each time step t, uh, we are predicting the next direction uh, of the pre-trained diffusion model phi according to a, one of the regions uh, prompts. So this is like condition on WI, and we want that this direction will match um, will meet the mean square error um, in each region um, that we have. Okay, so jumping a bit to the results that we presented in the, in the paper. Um, so first of all, uh, this is some panorama generation results. And you can see uh, we compare to two baseline. One is table in painting, which is a uh, one, the, from the one case uh, of the approaches, and it was fine-tuned uh, for the task of painting uh, on a large-scale data. And uh, we have blended diffusion, which is using the prior of the model, but also is was specifically manipulated, like uh, tailored to the task of painting. And both works kind of work uh, sequentially. So you're starting from the central crop, and you extrapolate to the sides, and you can see that you don't have really. Uh, you can have like a patching um, inconsistency or that it's not really uh, diverse. Uh, whereas ours is like very diverse and uh, is seamless uh, with the transformation. As for the RDC task of region-based control, uh, we also compared to two baselines, which train specifically conditioning on the semantic layout. Uh, sorry that part of the text are kind of like, <laughs> Overlapping one another. Um, so both baseline are uh, trained on uh, for the specific task and blended diffusion is as before, is kind of like gradually uh, generating the background and then um, sequentially adding the ob object uh, each time. And you can see it also has this kind of not realistic uh, patching artifacts. And ours result is um, also matching the semantic layout and uh, is uh, natural and seamless. And differently from all the baseline I've showed to you before, uh, this is something that was like first pro pro produced by our method that you can combine uh, both of the approaches and can generate images in arbitrary aspect ratio. And you can also supply with not like tight mask, you can give it bounding boxes and it have like versatile results according to the, to the control that is given and it's, much more flexible than the one that is given before. And uh, to lastly, I wanna show you some cool results that are fine from the internet. So those are, those are not our results. So shortly after we released the paper, people build up already web demos that you can also, also after this talk, uh, you can find them online. 
I think one of the famous are uh, of Hagen face. And what is nice about that, that because it's a general framework that we describe, I didn't, I didn't tell you all the story, but we describe it not only for the panorama case or the region-based control, and it can be uh, described as a formal, uh, a, a, I'm sorry, formal uh, kind of uh, framework that can, can be conditioned like hard constraint on, on for like, uh, as you see, sketch to image or like image editing or from the right, they also, uh, there are people that use that for doing a uh, super resolution. So these are all paper uh, results from the internet. Um, so uh, to conclude, um, I presented to you uh, a work that is um, using, uh, suggesting how to use uh, the prior that is learned by the diffusion model. And um, it requires no training, no fine tuning, and it's very easy to use though. So you don't have this overhead of taking, finding a data set and pre-training everything. You can just like um, manipulate it yourself. And as I said before, uh, our paper suggests a general framework that can be um, for novice user to decide what they want and how they want to control the generated image. And we also, for the future work, we think that it can be applied to maybe video editing or 3D generation um, by like sampling uh, based on the prior of a 2D diffusion model. On the side of the limitations of our method, um, I think we saw some of the results uh, in the previous talks before that once you have a diffusion model, it really relies on the text prompt and the text engineering that, uh, that you're giving. So it's relying on the good bet that the diffusion model is, uh, is choosing. So for example, here, if we trying to uh, create this image and each crop should have a waterfall in the forest, it really applies to the fact that there is in each crop waterfalls to the forest, but it doesn't have a really global coherence in the overall picture because it's not really realistic to have such waterfall arranged. Um, however, in some cases, um, what it's also nice with a method that uh, you can mitigate this problem by introducing another semantic layout and maybe enforce where you want the waterfall to to be located in the image. Um, so that's it. This is another uh, result from our paper. And if you're interested, uh, if you have some question, you're more than welcome to approach to me and there's more information in a project page. And I would like to thank the organizing of the conference and my co-authors, um, Omer, Yaron, and Tali. And thank you for listening.